Hello. So thank you for coming. Um, Chris is going to do most of the talking. I just want to say a few thank yous to the Dean's Office for providing funding for the uh, awards and for uh, you know, encouraging this project, which I think is a good way to do some outreach for the department. And uh, obviously thank Chris and uh, all the participants. And I think that uh, <clears throat> you know we, we hope that we can build this into something that that uh, is repeated. So this is the first try, but uh, you know it looks good so far. So thanks for coming. Thank you. Mark. Hello, hi everyone. My name is Christopher Plenzik. I'm the project coordinator in the Department of Mathematics and Statistics, and I want to welcome you to the first ever award ceremony for our Math, Math and Stats 101 video contest. So thank you for being here. <laughs> so today we'll be announcing the winners of the contest, and we'll be streaming. Uh, we'll be showcasing the videos as well. So I hope you enjoy. <clears throat> so for those of you working. There you go. So in case there are some of you who are unfamiliar with the project, um, I'll give you a quick overview. So the competition encourages undergraduate and graduate students enrolled in a mathematics and statistics program, including a minor degree at Concordia University, uh, to create a one minute and one second long video describing a mathematical or statistical concept uh, in a language aimed for a general audience. Um, so the competition goal was twofold. The first is for mathematics outreach. And the second was to supply undergraduate and graduate students uh, with new tools for communication that can be useful in their future careers. So we're really trying to spread the word of the awesome stuff that we do in the department and how math can be related to our everyday lives. And that's the purpose of this contest. Um, so let's give you a quick overview of the judging criteria and what these videos were judged on. So we had three different criteria for this. The first was the explanation of the project, and this was scored for 60%. So is a concept relevant uh, to math and stats? Is the language suitable for a general audience? And is the explanation clear and concise? The second criteria we had was creativity. So this was worth 30% of the grade of the mark. Um, so we judged based on originality of the video, and if the concept was explained in a new and interesting novel way. And finally, we had 10% allocated to the overall quality of the video. So it was aesthetically pleasing, but they make good use of visuals and audio and so forth. Um, so with that being said, I'd like to thank the judges who were gracious enough to judge these videos. Um, so first we have Giovanni Rosso, who is an associate professor in the Department of Math and Stats. We have Lisa Kakinami, who's another associate professor in the Math and Stats Department. Uh, she's also the associate chair. And finally, we had Joanna Brzozowska, who is an associate professor in the Design and Computations Art, uh, Computation Arts. Uh, she also has a degree in mathematics. Um, so I'd just like to thank all of them for participating in our first award ceremony. Um, so without further ado, uh, I'd like to start with giving the awards. So the first that we'll be talking about is the First Place Graduate Award. And I'd like to give a big round of applause for Benedetta and Nina for her project, uh, for her review and as part of the presentation this uh, So Benedetta, if you're here, you could come and accept your yeah. lovely certificate. Thank you. All right, so after every award announcement, we'll be screening the video as well. So please enjoy her uh, application. Were you ever so cold that you wished to be at the other end of the world? Well, it could have been just as cold there. Indeed, there's this theorem in mathematics called the Borsuculum theorem that states that for any continuous function from an n sphere to Rn, there will exist a point x such that f of x equals f of minus x. For the case n equals 1, this means that a function from the circle to the real numbers will take two antipodal points, so two points, one at the opposite side of the other with respect to the center of the circle, to the same value in R. For n equals 2, a continuous function of 1 of 2 from the sphere to R2 will take two antipodal points to the same point in R2, and so on. 
For example, we can take the elasticity of a point of the circle as our function, or the thickness of a ring, or the temperature on a parallel of the Earth. Therefore, on any parallel, there will be two people at opposite sides of the world feeling the same cold weather. The first of which goes to Justin McIsaac for the video entitled Proof e to the power ix plus one is equal to zero. So Justin, if you're here, please come accept your certificate. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. So now we'll be screening the video. Hey there. You may have heard of one of Euler's most famous equations before, e to the i pi plus one equals zero. Why does it equal zero? start with the function e to the ix and let's plot the point x equals 0, which gives us the value 1. Now find the derivative of the function i e to the ix. This means the tangent to the function is always a 90 degree rotation on itself from the origin. This makes a circle. Hence e to the ix is a circle moving counterclockwise by x degree. Complex numbers could be written in this form with real x and y, and complex functions could be written in this form with real f of x and real g of x. Therefore, e to the ix can be written as f of x plus i g of x. Looking here and being the trig experts we are, we know f of x equals cos of x and g of x equals sine of x. Hence, e to the ix equals cos x plus i sine x, otherwise known as Euler's formula. Plugging in pi, we get this, which gives us this. Rearrange things, we get e to the i pi plus 1 equals 0. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you, Justin, for that. All right, so now we're gonna move on to our second honorable mention prize in the under, undergraduate category. And this one goes to Sean Gregory for the video derivative simplified in one minute. If Sean is here, I guess not. Oh, give it up for him anyways. <laughs> and now for the video. Explaining derivatives in one minute, let's go. Derivatives are rates of change found at a specific point, and you get them by taking whatever power a number has, multiplying the power by that number, and subtracting one from the power. It looks like this. This works for any term with a variable. If you have constants, just get rid of them. If your variable doesn't have a power, simple. Just get rid of the variable and turn it into the coefficient. That basically means x is to the power of one, so just multiply it by one, which cancels, and make it to the power of one minus one, which also cancels. If you add four x squared minus six x plus eight, you get rid of the constant, multiply four by two, subtract the power of two by one, and get rid of the x and the minus six and that leaves you with 8x minus 6. There are certain rules to this, like the power rule. Looks like this. We'll be using f and g to describe each of them. The derivative is f prime multiplied by g plus f multiplied by g prime. Quotient rule works exactly the same. Just replace the plus with a minus and divide everything by g squared. Finally, the chain rule is if the function is the composition of another function, so it would be f to the power of g. Simple. The derivative is f prime of g multiplied by g prime. And there you have it. That's derivatives in one minute. Thanks for <laughs> listening. Thank you for that. All right, so we have two prizes, uh, two awards left to present. The next is for second place undergraduate, and this goes to Nika Angili for chessboard problem. Is she here? No? Well, there is. Thanks. <laughs> Given an 8x8 chessboard with two diagonally opposite corners removed, is it possible to fill the entire board with 31 dominoes, assuming that each domino covers three adjacent squares? By looking at the chessboard, we see that no touching squares are the same color. In other words, each white square is attached to a black one and vice versa. Now look at the dominoes as pieces of the board. Each domino has two touching black and white squares. Thus, to fill the entire board with the dominoes, we need equal numbers of each color. In a regular A by A chessboard, we have 64 squares, meaning 32 of each color. However, in our example, two diagonally opposite squares with the same color have been removed, and leaving us with unequal numbers of each color. So now we have 30 white squares and 32 black ones, therefore it is impossible to solve this problem with two excess black squares. Oh great, thank you, congratulations. <laughs> uh, she's here with us on Zoom, so congratulations to her. <laughs> 
Thanks for yeah, that. <laughs> All right, and then finally, but not last but not least, sorry, we have the first place undergraduate prize. And this one goes to Alexander Nazir for the video entitled Projections and Visualizing Higher Dimensions. All right, All right. and we'll screen this video. I'm going to show you the shadow of an object as it rotates in space. Specifically, the projection of a three-dimensional shape onto a two-dimensional plane. Can you tell what it is? Because you've seen this shape before, you can hold it in your imagination. This allows you to take its projections and recombine them into the original full-dimensional version. A pyramid. Here's a different shadow. What does this shape look like? If you're having a hard time, you're not alone. You are looking at the three-dimensional shadow of a tesseract, a four-dimensional cube. As humans, we lack the ability to visually build in dimensions other than those we exist in. Our imaginations simply can't make sense of it. But we can build mathematically, and with projections, extract visual information. A sort of looking glass, collapsing dimensions and giving us a glimpse into a world that is literally unimaginable. All right. So I'd like to congratulate and thank everybody who participated in this project and made it the success that it is. Um, I'd also like to take this time to announce that next semester we will be holding another contest. And this one is a little bit more lighthearted. It's a meme contest for mathematics and statistics. <laughs> so I'll be, I'll, I'll be posting more about this uh, in the coming semester. But I hope that um, it takes off as well as this one did as well. And with that being said, I'd like to thank a few people. So I'd like to thank the chair of the department, Cody Hangman. I'd like to yeah, thank you. I'd like to thank my the departmental staff who listened to me and helped me <laughs> through this entire process. So we have Bonnie, Christina, Carmen, Debbie, Geraldine, Judy, and Sandra. So thank you to them. I'd like to thank the judges as well, Giovanni, Lisa, and Joanna. I'd like to also thank all of the applicants for, the, uh, for this contest. It was a great learning experience, and I hope that they had fun creating these videos as well. I'd also like to thank the, uh, the dean, the dean's office for the Faculty of Arts and Science for, in part, funding this project, and of course, for Fourth Space for collaborating with us. Well, thank you very much. It's been great working with everybody here. Uh, and then with that being said, I'd just like to mention that all these videos will be posted online on our department website eventually, very shortly actually. And uh, I want to say congrats again to everybody who uh, participated and who was, received an award. And please enjoy some refreshments and snacks. So thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> so I was planning on doing. Do you have any finish, any words? All right. Well, thank you very much. Please enjoy the snacks. Thank you, Chris. Okay. Thank you, <laughs> thank you Chris. Thank you. thank you. We are going to go ahead and uh, close up the Zoom, but we will keep some of the videos going, or we will keep the uh, screen share going yeah. so people can see what's uh, what's happening. So feel free to stick around. We're here and open until about five thirty, six o'clock. Thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.